I'd say we were five, ten years ahead of the curve. We did CSAs before they were popular here. Grass-fed beef. Our youngest did 4-H, and she also did farm markets with me. Um, the other two always helped. Of course, they had to. <laughs> but they have other interests outside of farming. To sell it is it's going to be a challenge, but I think we're both ready. We feel like we've done what we want to, and it's time to move on, and our bodies are getting tired. <laughs> and we have other things we want to do. Banks and financial institutions are not as well versed in how to estimate what a farm costs. They're looking at the buildings, the home, the barns, because they want to know if they're going to be able to resell those and make their money back if the buyer was to default on their loan. You know, the land is something that they don't necessarily look at. If there's no type of a protection option, something that says that the land has to stay all in one piece and used for farming, it would go to auction. And if it's a lot of nice prime fields with lots of road frontage, those are going to be houses. So the farmland program basically is a platform for landowners and land seekers to connect. So we offer the space for the landowners to post their opportunities, whether it's a sale, a lease, partnership, or some other type of arrangement, um, in hopes to attract a buyer or a lessee or someone who wants to partner. It's 2018. A lot of people are using their smartphones and their tablets. So that's basically where the program has morphed into computer dating. We try to promote the physical interaction because it just goes a long way to talk. Farmers are old school and they want to have that interaction face to face with somebody. Hey guys, are we even going to use these for that Um, I don't know. Yeah, a really newfound fear of ladders. The biggest obstacle for like beginning farmers is land accessibility. I mean, FarmLink got us like to a point where our farm business, like, we're so much more confident. At first, we were pretty risk averse, so we were like, okay, if we can get on some leased land with like as little money as we can spend to get going, and just see if we can make this work for us. And so far it has, it gives, it's given us the confidence to be like, okay, yeah, this is, we're going to keep going. So right now we're leasing a piece of land that's just about five, five and a half acres. We are searching for a permanent home. And so we are hesitant to put in any infrastructure that's not easily moved. We've built like our walk-in coolers on trailers and all of our water lines are above ground. It's awesome to make the land like better and more fertile than you found it. You know, it's costly to do. Like buying in, you know, compost and amendments is expensive. Like to build this like dreamy soil and then leave it behind is sad <laughs> a little bit for us. So we're now like we're looking to buy land.
obviously like starting a business is stressful, but to not have the added stress of like a mortgage or I mean, whatever sort of loan hanging over you is like, I mean, that works for us for sure. Yeah. So much so that we're going to go try and get some loans. <laughs> There's people that farm with money, and there's people that farm for money. So we're successful here in the latter category. <laughs> but we've been talking about selling for a few years, and we're not in the position where we have to sell it. Um, we still enjoy what we do. We actually get better every year which is how I'm pretty sure it's supposed to work, right? Right. We would love to sell it to someone who wants to farm, obviously. The most serious people who've looked at the farm have had some farming background, so they understand when they see the photos and they see the description that it's incredible land. I think the most serious person is going to have some financial backing and have a good work plan and realize that farming is not something that you put on paper like running a drugstore where you have a monthly known income. It's not what you make, it's what you keep. What are the biggest lessons that owning and running this farm have taught you? <laughs> Perseverance and just uh, usually when things look abysmal they usually aren't. So. It's not like a boat, it's not like it sinks. You can usually walk home when something breaks. Things work out when you buckle down and, and do them.